this line is here. That's just the separation of the composite from the from the enamel. That's a, what probably started out a white as a white line, and over a period of time ended up as a stained white line. What a lot of us probably don't know, or is what's the stuff down here on the gingival margin? Now, I have a trained eye because I've been looking at these for a long time, so I, I know what that is. That's under polymerized composite, and uh, it's just not cured completely. Probably because the light didn't go through the class two down to that margin. So we know it's real. I think we've all seen it. We need to uh, find a solution that eliminates all these problems. And I will show you a couple of ways to deal with that today. This is a new technology. I first learned about it from Professor Satter at the University of Washington, uh, Ali Reza Satter, we call it Ali. Uh, the OCT, Optical Coherence Tomography. Now, I'm gonna show you some images made with that technology. And it's, it, it kind of looks, reminds you of x-ray. Looking at it, well, that's a pretty neat x-ray. Well, it's not x-ray. And I'll show you some results. They're, they're quite impressive. So what you do, you, you put composite in there, and here's one in a prep. Now here's Sonic Fail. That's my nickname for Sonic Fail there. For Sonic Fail. Let's go ahead and put it in and watch it fail. There goes the Sonic Fail in there. Now it's in there pretty nicely. I don't see any problems. Now, let's turn the light on. Hmm. Now this is speeded up about 3x, so that's a 10 second light here. And look, you've got a gap on it. So what are the consequences? If it's all sealed, you have post-op sensitivity to bite pressure. If it's not sealed at the gingival margin, you have recurrent carries coming along. Hello, recurrent carries. Sonic fail doesn't work. You make a seal. What else can I say? I can't make up a story for it. Okay, here's Bell PC. Hold on. Okay, go ahead and inject it. Injecting pretty normal, yeah. Don't see any problems with the injection of it in there. There's no gap or anything. Let's wait 90 seconds and see if it develops a gap. After 90 seconds, what do you know? No gap. Okay. Yeah, no gap in this stuff. Perfect. What we're going to do is put the millisitch only on there. I'm told you this, this is really funny. You just think of the uh, Emacs compression dome as an upside down tin can. That's pretty good. I like that. A bonded tin can. And then it <coughs> keeps the denton in compression. What we should do is look at what Pascal Magni's done for margin elevation so that we don't need to take this down to farther down the tooth than we'd like. We'd like to leave the enamel there. Now here's a zirconia. The slides here and we'll be done. Here's Wi-Fi zirconia cemented against my advice. A good friend of mine did that one. He says, oh, it's thick enough. I can cement it. Six months later, he says, hmm. That wasn't such a good move. I should have bonded it like they said. And one of my good friends, I don't want to name him. Huh? You can buy Zarkadi very really easy. Piece of cake if you want to buy. Just sandblast the darn Zarkadi with aluminum oxide and apply the Panavia F2.0. Done. That's all it takes. It's super easy. Then an enamel and dentin, use ED primer. That's what I prefer. If you want to use Total Edge, that's fine. Okay, go for it. Now here's the slot I was looking for. I forgot where I was. Here's Bucky. You see the little spots on the uh, bubble floor? Those are little bubbles within the material. Okay, that's not a gap. Sonic fill from Kerr, 100% gap. It deserves a name, Sonic Fail. Now, Surefill, they did something right in this. 
they only got a partial failure. See, here's an area that's sealed and a little kind of a donut shaped area of gap. I don't know what they did. Uh, they almost got it. So if I was the director of research at Searfield, I'd, that's why I'd probably figure out what that was going on and get that to happen everywhere. That would be the best material other than LKZ. Now this is from Mike Nelson once again. Now this guy that uh, I told you from Reading. Mike did some occlusal composites and this is, let's see here, four years and five months. There it is, there's a bulky Z. Here it is over here, bulky Z. I can't see any problem. I can see a little bulky Z, but I certainly don't see any problem. I asked Mike if he cured those on the occlusal after he was done. He said yes. Whether it makes matters or not, I don't know. I guess you can afford 10 seconds, so go ahead and get a cure it. Why not? Here's some more from Mike. Bigger ones, LPZ, four years, five months. Yeah, looking good. See, there's where the lens right in there. Not a white line, it's just a little occlusal, um, I see a change in uh, contour. Again, looking good. Now, here's something. That Mike sent me, uh, I think last year. Here's a here's some excessive wear. The book is the it that was uh, was in fact polymerized on the on surface with a light. See another wear. Now that is extremely unusual. I've only seen this rarely, and uh, uh, now and then somebody has sent me a picture and say I got some wear. You know, it's typically on a second molar. I can't even think of one that wasn't on a second molar. <clears throat> so, I would exercise a little bit of caution on second molars. Areas you think might get a lot of wear, 